believe we addressed all of our needs except for center. So we got an, uh, an offensive tackle, off offensive guard. Question will be whether or not that that tackle that we drafted is going to be on the on the right side um, because we've already got Trent Williams at left. Uh, same with the guard. Will that be our right or left guard? Um, but then knowing that we got four, the other four draft picks on on def I'm sorry, then we got two wide receivers. I only expected us to get one. I was surprised we actually got both. The one, the guy from Florida, and then in the uh, seventh round, we got a receiver from USC. My concern with them is they aren't tall receivers by receiver standards. I believe the, the one from USC is 6'2", which isn't short, but um, I thought that we would have gone for maybe uh, a tall receiver because uh, we need someone to be able to stretch the field, I believe, vertically a little bit more. Um, and then we also got into linebacker, which I'm glad. And then we got a safety in a corner. I'm hoping that Hafanga, our starting safety, comes back off his ACL injury. But I believe that we um, – the only – the other area I thought we were going to address was uh, defensive linemen, knowing that we lost uh, Chase Young. So I would give our draft um, a, a B. Uh, I believe that we are uh, offensively, we'll have to see how our offensive line does this year. And I'm still concerned about our defense, our defensive line linebackers once we get to our backups, when our starters have to go out or we lose them because of the injury during the year. Because that's, I believe, what costs us our Super Bowl is our attrition on defense against Kansas City. Yeah, so I was going over. I, I was I was concerned with our offensive line, even though we grabbed uh, the guy from Kansas. Um, so I went back and looked through. I went through all of our, our free agent signings um, where we addressed the defensive line a lot in that, almost like we were, like, doubling up on, on positions. And then in the unrestricted uh, free agents, in the uh, the undrafted free agents, from this year's draft, we picked up a couple centers there. So okay. a guy that didn't get drafted <laughs> 250 times, I don't know how great they are, but I mean, you know, I mean, if you can, if you feel you can coach them up, I guess, I guess it works. I mean, I mean, almost half the league's undrafted anyway. So. Well, it, your quarterback it, barely got drafted. So. And look at him. Yeah. Oh, so you, there's hope. It's fantastic. Yeah. And that, that, right. receiver, that receiver, he, Ricky Purcell from Florida is really nice though. Good yeah. receiver. Yeah, and I can't tell if we're I can't tell if like I thought we were drafting him because it was like, oh, Ayuk's gone or Debo's gone. And there's like no it's like they're willing to listen, but the asking price is so high that nobody's offering. So I can't I can't really tell what the dynamic is there. I don't know if they're trying to get them to take a pay cut. I don't know if they're trying to position themselves so they're not paying Brandon Ayuk thirty million a year. I, I can't I don't really get it, but we have nine hundred wide receivers, so hopefully a couple of them work out okay. Yeah, I heard on sports news today that as of today, the plan for the Niners is to keep both Ayuk and Debo. But that's today. I believe it's fluid. I mean, you'll have to see, number one, what happens leading up to the season. And two, if they are still with uh, on the roster at the start of the season, are they keeping them? Because as we know, you know, teams lose players during the year. And if, you know, a team is in need of a receiver and they're willing to offer enough, could that then uh, make the Niners interested in, in trading either one? Yeah. Yeah, I think that'd be, that's, I don't know. Cause it's hard because we don't really like Ayuk's R1 and he has great numbers, but we don't really use them like you see them use other number one receivers. Like he's, he's almost like a, he's almost like a slot receiver for us. Yeah. So I don't know if teams are looking at that going like, yeah, he's good and his numbers are great, but I don't know if he works cause we don't use them. Like we don't air the ball out to him ever. It's all, but I think that's what you're trying to secure, right? I think that's the reason. But you guys drafting so many receivers, you want to give Brock those weapons this year where he can air it out. And so you got that one you got in the sixth round, you got Purcell in the first round. So you got some receivers. And even though you're stacked with them, right? I think I think the strategy is going to be to air it out. Your run game is already strong, right? You know, McCaffrey going, going to do what he do. But to have that receiving game to go with it, man, it's going to be, you know, you got you, – you can pick and choose, right? So yeah. I'm not mad. I'm not mad at the Niners' uh, draft picks. I'm. I'm just. I'm hoping that we have a running back that Kyle trusts enough to not. I mean, how McCaffrey got through that season without mm -hmm. injuries is beyond. They used him all the time. I mean, way up in games and games that were getting that were getting killed, like Baltimore. It's he's running the ball so many times. It just seems like way too many touches for somebody that you're trying to keep you would hope to keep fresh enough for for a big postseason run 